Hello, welcome to the fourth day of the study of the book The Baha'i Faith and Introduction by Gloria Fezzi. Today we are going to study the third session of part 1 The History of the Baha'i Faith. The Exemplar Abdul Baha means the servant of the glory. This title by which he chose to be called sums up the life of the exemplar of the Baha'i faith. From his early days when as a child he had been taken to see Baha'u'llah in the dungeon of Tehran to the time when after a life of suffering and trump he was laid to rest on the slopes of Mount Carmel. He had but one desire to serve the cause of Baha'u'llah. He was eight years old when Baha'u'llah was cast into the plague pit. All their property was confiscated and even their friends were afraid to come near them. In the empty house, Abdul Baha's mother put a handful of flour into his palm as the only nourishment she could provide. When he went out on the street, he was stoned as the child of heretic. Later, he followed his father into exile and willingly shared all his sufferings when he was banished from place to place and finally to the prison of Akka. As he grew into manhood, Abdul Baha came to be regarded as the embodiment of all the virtues that Baha'is longed to attain. He was gentle and courteous. He was generous and brave. He combined great wisdom with touching humility and his love for God and his fellow men knew no bounds. He spent every day of his life serving others and bringing joy into the lives of all around him. The poor and the sick were his special care and the orphan looked upon him as a father. His friends loved him to the point of adoration and his enemies could find no blemish in his beautiful character. His station was not that of a messenger of God, but his life was an example of human perfection. During Baha'u'llah's lifetime, Abdul Baha was his closest companion. He spared himself no trouble in order to bring a measure of comfort into his father's life. He took upon himself the tedious daily tasks so that Baha'u'llah could devote his time to more important matters. Many of those who dropped to their home in Baghdad were quite satisfied to meet Abdul Baha and bring their questions to him, although he was still in his early youth. As time went on, Baha'u'llah himself would encourage his followers to take their problems to Abdul Baha, whom he lovingly referred to as the Master. After Baha'u'llah passed away, the Baha'is turned to Abdul Baha as their leader and their guide. His selfless devotion to the cause of God was an inspiration to them all. His guidance helped them to take the new message to different parts of the world. Abdul Baha himself was still a prisoner in Akka. With the passing of Baha'u'llah, the enemies of the faith had found fresh jail and renewed their attacks on Abdul Baha, who was once more conf- confined within the city walls. Through his first correspondence, however, he kept in constant touch with the Baha'is everywhere, answering their questions, guiding their activities, encouraging them in their work, and uplifting their spirits when they were being per- persecuted for their faith. Persecutions of one kind or another were inflicted on Abdul Baha himself for many long years. Through it all, he remained calm and happy. His joy of life and his delightful sense of humor never left him. My home is the home of laughter and mart, he would say. When people wondered What kept him so happy under the most trying conditions, he said, there is no prison but the prison of self. At last, the revolution of the young Turks set all the prisoners in Akka free, and Abdul Baha's confinement came to an end. 
his captivity in the Holy Land had lasted 40 years. He had gone into prison as a youth and came out of it as an old man. Although he was broken in health, his spirit was unsecond, and as soon as he had freedom of movement, he decided to take the message of Baha'u'llah to the Western world. The Baha'i faith, which had first spread to the Middle East, the Far East, and North Africa, was now being established in Europe and America. Already a number of Western Baha'is had come to visit Abdul Baha in the Holy Land and gone back, fired with antagonism, and determined to spread the message in all parts of the West. Abdul Baha's extensive journeys throughout Europe and America when he was almost 70 brought the faith to the attention of millions of people. He was invited to speak at churches and synagogues, temples and mosques, universities and charitable institutions. Thousands of people from the highest government officials, scientists and philosophers to the most humble workmen and poorest tramps came to meet him from early morning till late at night and Abdul Baha gave them all freely of his wisdom and love. They went away uplifted, inspired with new hope and full of wonder about a man who had spent most of his life in prison yet had such an understanding of other people's problems and such vast knowledge of all affairs. Millions of others who did not meet Abdul Baha heard about him and the masses he had brought to their source through dozens of articles in the press. By the example of his life, Abdul Baha showed, showed how it is possible to put into practice the loftiest spiritual idols under all kinds of conditions and in situations as different as those of life in a panel, panel colony and in the most modern cities of the world. Abdul Baha passed away in the Holy Land in 1921, serving the cause he loved so well to the last day of his life. He had once said, Behold the candle, how it gives its light. It wished its life away drop by drop in order to give forth its flame of light. How well this applied to the life of Abdul Baha, who gave of himself day and night in order to light the way of others.